didn't see that. I'm just admiring my nice rolling plywood cart. Not bad, even if I do say so myself. So, um, you want to see how I made it? Keep watching then, and I'll uh, see you in a minute. First things first, cutting the timber to size. I'm using some 2x4s, 1x3s, and I'm also using, I believe, a 2x9. Can't remember, to be honest. But um, making sure these are cut to the right size. So I did all of my cuts at the same time, just to make sure. I cut some of the 2x4s to smaller lengths so they could go in as a cross section to give it some support. I'm going to be using half lap joints for this. It's the easiest way to give it some good support for the uprights. Now I know what you're saying, this would be easier on the table saw, and I know it would be, but I can't use my table saw right now, so I had to do it on my lovely new toy, and I was happy with my new toy. I did have to pick up the slightly bigger battery for the Milwaukee though, so I did go for a 9 in the end, just to give it that extra power. It wouldn't really last more than one of those sections if I hadn't. So once these were all cut out, I removed the waste with my little hammer, perfect little job for that, and then cleaned the rest up with a chisel. It wasn't the easiest way to do it, but it worked. And then, of course, just a little quick test fit. And it's close enough. Now this was the real test for it. This took me a long time to cut all three uprights in it by doing it this way. I didn't want to, but I really had no choice. And it worked in the end, but oh my god did this take a toll on my machine. Once again, quick test fit. You can see it's not perfect, but it'll hold and it'll do, so I'll keep it. Yeah, not perfect. I was just going to screw this in, but I thought, no, the glue and screw will give it a little bit of a better hold, especially when it's going to have a lot of weight for it. I went for Type Bond, just the original, because it's not going to be outside, it's going to be stored in the carriage. And when it is rolled outside, it's not going to be there for very long, so I figured, why not? Just the original Type Bond will do. And this worked right. So this is when I started to make my mistakes. Now, what I should have actually done is put these on the end rather than the middle because it's not as wide as it should have been and it's a lot longer than it needs to be now. But I'll have to make do with it. After checking everything was all square, I used these small right angle brackets that I got from Amazon. There's just an easy way for me to reference that I'm actually getting it 90 degrees. Otherwise, I know I'm gonna get it wrong. So these actually came in quite handy this time and work quite well. I'm using some leftover decking screws that I had for this. They're about 150 mil long, so they should hold it quite a lot. And I put two in each corner for this. They worked right and uh, means I can just reuse the scraps that I've got rather than having to buy more hardware. And this is going to be a recurring feature in this video. This is when I could have picked a better camera or angle to use. I added some extra 2x4s in in this section because obviously this is where the wheels are going to go. So I wanted to give it that little bit more strength and give it actually something for the wheels to grab onto. It also gives me somewhere to attach the plywood base as well. I hadn't thought of that when I originally designed it. This is also one of the only times I've actually used April's hammer for anything. I'm too scared to break it. So you'll notice that I'm cutting these down quite a bit shorter than the actual length of my rack. It's because, oh look, mistake number two. That's right, I added the third pillar in before I cut the, ba the sheet for the base. Silly me. This just made things a lot harder for me in the end because I had to try and fit it out and 
me being a perfectionist, I hated it the way it was. So I actually cut out some very small strips to fill that gap you can see by that middle pillar. This is also the first time I've ever used a nail gun, so I thought I'd leave this clip in for you, just to enjoy the pain of me figuring out why it doesn't work. Oh, and nearly pointing it at my face too. Yeah, monkey not happy. Just a simple jam, easy enough to fix, but well, not for me. I couldn't be bothered at this point to try and cut the sheet of plywood to size, so I fit it in and then use my track saw to cut the excess off. Oh look, mistake number three. So I forgot to cut out the bits that the wood go across to brace it. Now, that means that none of my braces are in the same place. They're not straight, they're not square, and they're definitely dodgy. But that's uh, why we have hindsight, isn't it? And there's that other awesome camera angle I was talking about. Now that's one hell of a shot. I do figure out that I have to move eventually, so you can see what I'm doing. Well, I think that was more of a coincidence than me working it out for myself. Having some help at this point would have probably been quite useful, but luckily enough, brute force and ignorance works for me quite well. Just enjoy me struggling with this for a minute. I ended up putting six wheels on this one, so two at each end and obviously two in the middle. I put two locking ones at the front so I could actually lock it into place because I was worried about this rolling. Even though the ground's pretty level, I was actually slightly concerned about it, so they work. There's just, again, Amazon stuff. They do some pretty good, decent things occasionally. Now this is a prime example of how not to lift things. God, my posture is terrible. I was surprised at how well it turned out though. It rolled pretty well and well, it looked damn good actually. Now I wanna make one thing clear. It takes years of training to get this bunny hop right. So whatever you do, don't try it at home. I was a gymnast in my previous life. But seriously, I just added this little strip at the front just to stop everything from sliding off. Ta -da. Once I started loading it up, I realised that I had an issue of everything falling off, so I had to add these little box section in in the back room. Now this is something that other guys have used before and other people have done, so I am obviously copying their idea, but it holds it in a lot better and I'm not worried about things sliding off the back anymore. I used pocket holds for most of this, apart from where I could actually go straight into those uprights. Most of it was pocket holes. I still have getting my head around pocket holes, they work okay, but sometimes I do have them rip out on me. See, I told you I'm careful with 8 Bulls Mallet. It's one of my prized possessions, don't you know? So, there you go. It can hold, I don't know, a decent amount of plywood um, on the front and it's got that nice storage section at the back where I can put all of my offcuts, slightly misshapen uh, boards and um, just random stuff that I don't want lying around. So I'm quite happy with this. 
turned out a little bit bigger than I wanted, but I think that's going to work out well for me in the end. Um, just want to say a big shout out to Sean in the Shed for the awesome um, t-shirt and mug that you saw at the beginning. He's an amazing chap, does some really nice things, so make sure you go and check out his YouTube channel. I'll leave the link in the description below. So um, that's it for me today. Happy with how it turned out, working well so far. And uh, make sure you click on that bell icon and subscribe as well. There'll be it floating around here somewhere and my link to the last video will be there as well. So if you haven't seen that, check it out.